What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Alex Wilson. And Tommy DeVito's looking pretty good lately. That win on Sunday afternoon versus the Washington Commanders, he turned in a phenomenal performance. But we do have to keep in mind, Tommy DeVito is the third-string quarterback on the Giants roster. He's starting these games. But what happens when Tyrod Taylor is back to return to the lineup, when he is fully healthy and taken off of injured reserve? Should the Giants roll with Tommy Tommy DeVito, or should they put Tyrod Taylor back in the lineup? Alex and I are going to go ahead and discuss that in today's episode and kind of talk about why we think Tommy DeVito is the man to continue starting the rest of the regular season, as well as a couple other pieces of Giants news. Andrew Thomas once again dealing with a pretty significant injury, an MCL sprain, according to Dan Duggan of The Athletic. What does that mean for this team? And should the Giants maybe shut Andrew Thomas down for the season? We'll discuss that. And we'll talk about Shaq Leonard getting released from the Indianapolis Colts. Should the Giants try to reunite him with linebacker Bobby Okereke? Or should they just continue to develop Micah McFadden? We'll go ahead and give our takes on that as well. But before we dive into all of these topics, make sure you leave a like if you do enjoy this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and comment your thoughts on the topics down below in the comment section. If you listen on Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review and go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. But without further ado, Alex, how are you doing today, my friend? And I first want to get your take on Andrew Thomas's injury. How are you feeling about that? I mean, the guy just can't catch a break this season. We know how important he is to this offense, but now he's dealing with a knee injury and it's an MCL sprain. Those can be pretty serious. I was just reading right before we started recording, Aaron Jones of the Green Bay Packers is out this week with an MCL sprain. This is an injury that players usually miss a significant amount of time with you know and Andrew Thomas played through it on Sunday and I don't know if the Giants are going to ask him to continue to play through it or if they might shut him down for a little while land him on IR I don't know but I want to get your take on it what do you think that the Giants should do with this Andrew Thomas situation and do you think that this is a situation where they should just shut him down for the rest of the season to kind of avoid any aggravation of this injury I mean look what what is the benefit of having Andrew Thomas play right now through injury like if we're being honest um keeping him healthy, making sure he doesn't, you know, further hurt his knee. Cause think about it like, from a logical standpoint, if you have an injury in your knee, you are, you're already overcompensating for that injury by putting more pressure on maybe your other leg, or you're putting more pressure on that already injured. Like, and maybe you're taking a painkiller to, you know, play through it. Think about how freaking like ridiculous that sounds. Like you have a player, your season's lost, you're three and eight. Um, you're done. You're you're already evaluating Tommy DeVito, an undrafted rookie out of out of Illinois. You're really really looking at him. We're going to talk about him in a couple minutes. But Andrew Thomas playing right now through an MCL sprain. If he overcompensates and you know he puts too much pressure on his right leg, he could hurt himself. You know he could get a much more serious injury. What if that MCL sprain ends up tearing and suddenly you know tears completely and then you're out for months and then you're coming off a significant injury where you require surgery? Like, are we really going to compromise his health like this? Like, have we not learned that? You know, playing this game with injuries is in our is in our best interest to avoid. I don't know. The Giants seem to defy logic at times, so I'm not going to you know sit here and act like this is not something they would do. Uh, but it, if it could be not that severe, it could be like a minor strain where like he's he's okay, like it's not that painful, he can play through it. Like maybe the doctors told him like you're not going to you're not going to further aggravate this injury. Totally possible. Um, but you know, it, knee sprains like this obviously means like it's slightly a slight tear. Like you have to be careful with those because you could be risking a lot further injury. So my opinion, why, what's the point? You know what I mean? Like what's the point of him playing left tackle if the season's gone and at the same time, like we're evaluating youngsters already. And, you know, I think, I think it's just him. I think he just wants to play through it. And I respect that about him, but compromising his future because of it seems kind of like a bad idea to me. So, you know, I'll, I'll kind of, my take, my take lands there that if it's, you know, if you don't want to risk your, arguably your best player if you don't want to risk his future health probably don't play him with a sprained mcl yeah and listen the giants invested a lot into andrew thomas like this is a serious investment for them and you could argue that maybe it's a little bit irresponsible to put this expensive investment out onto the field while injured in your knee that might not be the best idea for the giants considering the long-term investment that they made for him however the other side of the coin which i will argue for and play a little bit of devil's advocate if he's healthy enough to play if he gets cleared by the doctors and they say you can you are allowed to play i think you have to argue that he should play because the Giants are trying to build something in this culture, in this locker room right now. They don't want to quit. They don't want to tank. If they're vehemently against tanking, 
shutting down Andrew Thomas for the season kind of goes against that idea, right? Like if they are so against tanking, I mean, if you put him down on injured reserve while he can play, while he is cleared by doctors to be able to play, it does kind of send a tanking message to the locker room. And I don't know if that's the best idea. So I think that there's pros and cons here to putting him back in the lineup, to keeping him in the lineup, to taking him out of the lineup, both ways I could see Um, being argued for and against. But right now, I think that the Giants need to tread carefully with Andrew Thomas. That's the number one thing that they need to do. We'll see if he practices tomorrow. Maybe the MCL sprain is very minor and it's not a big deal, but there is a report about an MCL sprain. So it's something to monitor and we will see what the Giants decide to do with him as we develop further into this practice week um, through Thanksgiving and into Sunday's game against the New England Patriots. Now I want to talk about the linebacker that just hit the open market. Well, not quite yet, but is on waivers. That's Shaq Leonard from the Indianapolis Colts. He was surprised Surprisingly waived by the Colts today. He hasn't had the best season. Not exactly a scheme fit with the Colts right now. Used to be an all pro with Indianapolis back when they were running that more traditional 4-3 defense. They've changed things up recently with different coaching staff changes. And it hasn't really worked out for Shaq Leonard. He hasn't been the same player. He hasn't been getting all that playing time that he used to get that he's really deserving of. And so he asked for a release. The Colts waived him today. A lot of Giants fans looked at that and said, oh my God, that would be great. The Giants, they could get another good linebacker in this group. Personally, I'm against it. I'm just going to quickly give my take before you go ahead and give yours, Alex. I don't think that claiming Shaq Leonard off of waivers would be a good idea for the Giants. They can't afford him, which I know you're going to dive into in just a second and talk about the Giants' salary cap space. And also, giving reps to Shaq Leonard in this lost 3-8 and eight season and taking reps away from younger talents like Micah McFadden and Isaiah Simmons doesn't make sense to me. Like we mentioned in yesterday's episode, and like we're going to talk about when we discuss Tommy DeVito in a little bit, the Giants right now are in their player evaluation phase of their season. The, the chances of them making the postseason are slim to none. They are not a great football team right now, but they do have a lot of good young pieces. They need to get more film on these young pieces so that they can properly evaluate them and decide who they're building around in the offseason. And that goes double for these talented players like an Isaiah Simmons, who just had a game winning pick six against the Washington Commanders, and like Micah McFadden, who's really coming to his own as a very high quality starter for the Giants this season giving these reps to an expensive aging veteran linebacker in Shaq Leonard doesn't make sense to me. He wouldn't come cheap. And while reuniting him with Bobby Okereke would be an interesting story and might be a little bit exciting, might give the Giants a little bit extra juice in that linebacker room. I'd rather them just keep rolling with these younger players. I want to see Michael McFadden continue to develop and be a really high quality starter. And I would like to see Isaiah Simmons continue to get a little bit of extra playing time like he has in recent weeks. He's been playing some pretty damn good football. He's had a few games where maybe the sample size is small, but it's a good sample size, including this most recent game against the Commanders. So I'm totally against uh, the idea of claiming Shaq Leonard to Alex, but I want to briefly get your take on that before we move on to the Tommy DeVito discussion. Yeah, I mean, look, Shaq Leonard, interesting player. Uh, you know, obviously he was not great in uh, Indianapolis this season, but here's the unfortunate reality. If you are like banging the table, let's go get Shaq Leonard. I'll ask you a simple question. Why? <laughs> why would you want to see, you know, less of Micah McFadden, a guy that could be a long-term piece here? Why would you want to see less of Bobby Okereke? who has been excellent the past like five, six, seven weeks and is becoming a staple in this Giants defense. Why? Why would you not want to see them? Like, why would you want to see anybody else? Shaq Leonard stepping in and he doesn't even know our defense. Like, let's be honest. I don't think many people are banging the table for Shaq Leonard, but if you are, like, it doesn't make any logical sense. And here's another reason why. He's going to cost you $6.5 million. You wonder how much the money the Giants have right now? Uh, Under $4 million. So, no, we cannot even afford Shaq Leonard. So, you know, forget about it. Not going to happen. Impossible. Also dumb to actually compromise the development of Micah McFadden where he would obviously be playing because they're not going to bench Bobby Okereke. That'd be the dumbest thing on earth. So I want to see more Micah McFadden. Like, let me see this aggressive second year player out of Indiana who has been shooting the gaps, tackles for loss, you know, making things happen, being a playmaker, 100% maximum effort. Why are you going to punish him for that? Like, I mean, nobody's thinking this. I, I'm just speaking. I'm just saying what you guys were thinking, which is makes no freaking sense. Um, so you know, that's my take on on uh, the Shaq Leonard concept. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll dive into the Tommy DeVito situation. You know, I'll, I'll let you kick it off with that because I know Tommy DeVito is your guy. Um, obviously, plenty of pizza for everybody. You know, get your meatball heroes and everything. I know they have that that one deli has has their own Tommy DeVito sandwich now. Is it like a penne alla vodka sandwich? Which actually sounds pretty freaking fire for what it's worth. Um, I don't know. I might have to go check that out, actually. I don't even know where it is. In Jersey? I guess that's where all the Italians live. I don't know. 
I don't know. There's a lot of Italians in the whole tri-state area for what it's worth, especially on my hometown of Long Island. It's like a little Italy over there. Um, I will say, I think you're a little bit wrong about there not being fans banging the table for Shaq Leonard because I had a few in my Twitter mentions. There's some fans who really want to see this happen. I think it's crazy. It blows my mind. It doesn't make any sense for all the reasons that we just explained. It's only (laughs) impossible if you look at it from the waiver wire standpoint, but he is expected to clear waivers because there's not a lot of teams that can take on that $6 million. So then he's a free agent that anyone can sign and there are Giants fans who want it to happen but again Alex and I are in agreement don't do it it doesn't make sense for this team but now let's talk about Tommy DeVito and let's talk about his development we want to see Michael McFadden develop we want to see Tommy DeVito develop as well we do want to see more of this we want to see a little bit more of the makings of a varsity athlete please comment down below if you got the Sopranos reference I put in my article today and I was really happy about it but Tommy DeVito man I like the way that he played on Sunday. I think he's a young player who can develop into something competent as a backup for this team. And while I don't think he's ever going to be a starter in the NFL, I would like to see him develop into that long-term, high-quality backup quarterback for the New York Giants. And let's rewind. Let's flash all the way back to the preseason when we were watching Tommy DeVito in preseason versus the Lions and all those other teams. And we were watching Tyrod Taylor, and it was me versus you, Alex. I was debating with you. We were getting into a little bit of an argument on the show. And what was I saying? Tommy DeVito is the future QB2 of this team, not Tyrod Taylor. I saw it before it was evident for everybody. I saw the flashes of potential in that preseason. I said I really liked Tommy DeVito. I liked the way he played. I liked the story behind him. And I thought that he had the potential to develop into a quality QB2 for this team. And what we're seeing right now in the regular season, I think I was right, Alex. I think I was right. Now, I'm not going to say that Tyrod Taylor played poorly for this team. I thought he had some really good moments. I thought he actually played some really damn good football for the New York Giants this season. But realistically, he's in his 30s. He's not a player. He's on an expiring contract. He's not a player that could stay here developing with the New York Giants. He's a player that the Giants signed in order to get fill-in reps in case Daniel Jones went down with an injury. But then Tyrod Taylor also went down with an injury, so he didn't necessarily do his job to the best extent that he possibly could have because he got hurt and he was supposed to be the guy to prevent the team from falling apart if somebody did get hurt. But instead, Tommy DeVito is that guy. He's the he's the guy that's preventing this team from falling apart. So I think that there's something to be said about the Giants giving Tommy DeVito the starting role just to reward him for even being healthy and ready to go ahead and play and really putting his all into this and galvanizing this team in recent weeks. I think there's something to be said about rewarding him for that. And also, like I said, Tyrod Taylor is an aging player. He doesn't have a future on this team. I want to see Tommy DeVito start the rest of the regular season, see if he could pick up any more wins, and have any more of these special moments like the one that he just had against the Washington Commanders. That's me personally. But Alex, again, I just want to say I was right. Tommy DeVito was the future QB2 of this team in comparison to Tyrod Taylor. Now, I'm not saying that he's 100% locked in as that future QB2, but I have to imagine you see the potential as well now. I know at at first you were a little hesitant to say that you saw the light here with Tommy DeVito, but what about his performance? Even against Dallas, I thought he had a couple good moments. It was pretty ugly, but what about his performance over these past few weeks as the starter and especially against Washington has maybe changed your mind a little bit and told you maybe he could be the QB2 of this team, and I want to see more of him for the rest of the regular season. Well, I'll say this. You definitely had a good point and and definitely made some good, valid arguments as to why he um, has that potential. But I'll I'll throw my two cents in, of course. Um, First thing, it's Washington. I don't know what it is about the Giants and Washington, but they they turn into the worst team ever when they play the Giants. Um, I look a backup quarterback is not supposed to step in and beat Dallas in, in Arlington, the backup quarterback is not supposed to go into Philadelphia and beat the Eagles, let alone beat them in MetLife. We can't even do that. So, you know, I'm not expecting Tommy DeVito to be able to walk in and beat competitive teams as a backup quarterback, but I am expecting him to step in and be relatively competitive against middling to bad teams and actually emerge victorious in some of those games, um, which he did. And I can give him a lot of respect for that. So, um, obviously I think it, it was very fair to be very skeptical of Tommy DeVito an undrafted rookie being, um, you know, an unknown and being, and, and not having that level of talent or quality to develop into a backup. Now, obviously 
you don't want to be spending three to four million dollars on a backup quarterback. You know what I mean? Like we have the most expensive backup quarterback in the game uh, with Tyrod Taylor. If we draft, <laughs> if we draft the rookie quarterback, we're going to have the most expensive backup quarterback in history in Daniel Jones. So it's going to be kind of the craziest backup quarterback evolution in the Giants. Tommy DeVito may end up being our third string, which I think is actually a fine uh, scenario for him to continue, like kind of learning the offense, you know, being involved, and then being the backup for a rookie quarterback one day if that's the, the road that the Giants decide to go down. But what I saw from Tommy last week um, it inspired me for a couple of reasons. One, um, I love the fact that his eyes are always downfield. I love the fact that he's not looking for the checkdowns. He's not looking for the give me's. He's looking for the how can I move this freaking ball and put us in a position where we can score points. He had three touchdown passes. He did just that. There was one play, we mentioned it yesterday, where Dan- Daniel Bellinger is sitting there wide open. Literally no one within 10 yards of him for a check down. And instead, Tommy Dewey was like, you know what? Screw that. You can you can freaking stand there and 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 sniff grass all day. I'm throwing this ball 30 yards downfield to Darius Slayton for a first down and plus some. You know, like that that says to me like he's aggressive and he's confident and he's not afraid to take those chances. Now, I'll say this. We saw the Tommy DeVito against Dallas when the offensive line was not very good. It was not a very good version of Tommy DeVito. He was really bad. Um, but with the offensive line playing at a relatively adequate level, yes, he was probably sacked what? Eight, nine, he was sacked nine times. 70 to 80% of them were his fault. Um, again, you hope that kind of portion of his game develops here. Why do I want Tommy DeVito playing the rest of this season? Because I want to see if his processing gets faster. I want to see if Tommy DeVito can get rid of the ball more efficiently and more quickly so that way he can eliminate some of those self-made sacks. Um, and at the same time, Tyrod Taylor, we know what he is. He's gone next year. Like, you know, because if, if, if they draft the quarterback, they're going to have Daniel Jones on a rookie. They're not going to need Tyrod Taylor. So, you know, uh, logically speaking, uh, you want to see Tommy DeVito because he could be your future QB2 in 2025. He could be that. Uh, so I do want to see more of him for that reason. I want to see if his processing speeds up. I want to see him make more impressive throws. I want to see him escape the pocket and make some throws on the run. I want to see his athletic profile. I want to see him step up and continue to showcase this 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 you know Italian confidence um, and, and really doing all this fun stuff, this Paisano confidence. Uh, Tommy touchdown. Some people are calling it Tommy guns. Like, I've heard a lot of stuff in the comments yesterday. So some of them are pretty funny, uh, but I do want to see more of him because what's there to lose? Like if you play Tyrod Taylor, you're just playing for, like, you're getting evaluation on Tyrod for no reason. Like he's not a future asset on this team. However, playing DeVito, you get to see him develop a little bit. You get to see him get comfortable in the NFL sequence, the NFL uh, game, live action, see if he takes some steps forward in the right direction. Um, and we saw some really good throws last week. We saw some really, really great plays. And if his and if his processing speeds up, he can be a very competent quarterback at the NFL level. No, he's not our starter. He's not going to be that. I, know, I don't think that that's even in the realm of possibility. But if he can be a competent backup, I can step up into – there's a better freaking chance of me getting a sandwich named after myself than Tommy DeVito becoming a starting quarterback for the Giants. But look, him developing into a QB2 um, is a is a great scenario for him. Not only does he have the best job in football, he gets to hang out and make money while he just kind of sits there um, and, and waits for his opportunity. But at the same time, the Giants now have a guy that they know they can trust, and he's going to lead this team. Like him and Saquon, like Saquon was backing him. The guys like him. Like he's a likable dude. Um, you know, he has a good story. Um, you know, everything about him kind of just has and breeds a good feeling about the Giants. Like a nice story. The Giants need more like feel good stories. We have too many dark days. Um, we need some feel good stories. Tommy DeVito is one of them. And I like the fact that fans are rallying behind him. The players are rallying behind him. We don't see that very often sometimes, or really oftentimes. Uh, so I am excited to see him play the rest of the season. With, for those reasons, I'm out on Tyrod Taylor for the rest of the year. And look, uh, I don't know if Tommy DeVito is going to win any more games. Really, New England's and the Packers are our best chance here at winning games. The Rams, maybe, but they have a decent offense. Um, and, you know, the Eagles, I want to see DeVito have some good games, like competitive games against some better opponents. That would give me a lot of optimism that he could develop into a competent QB2 in the future. So I agree with all the points that you just made. And listen, I'm totally in on Tommy DeVito being the starter for the rest of the season. Obviously, I want to see my Italian brother go out there, succeed and play some more winning football. Like that would be great. That's what I'm hoping to see. But I do have to ask you this one counterpoint question because I got to do my my thing here as the host and play devil's advocate at points, Alex. So I'm going to ask you, who gives the Giants the better chance of winning football games, in your opinion? Is it Tyrod Taylor or Tommy DeVito? Who helps this team win more games down the stretch? That's a really good question. Um, I would probably have to say 
Ah, <sighs> man. I mean, after last week, it's like, does DeVito, is DeVito capable of doing that? Like routinely? Can he, can he do that? Like not even Tyrod did that. Um, I'd probably lean Tyrod just because he's more veteran experience. Um, but I, right now, like I, I need the sample size is bigger for Tyrod. So I'm going to stick with the analytics and say like Tyrod gives us a better chance of winning. Uh, but DeVito gives us more knowledge and insight into, do we have a future QB two? And I think that that, like, I think the margin is slim enough where like, you know, the, the Tyrod is not going to perform like exponentially better than DeVito to the point where like we have to start this guy. The margin is small enough that I can that I can I can say that I think the Giants would rather run the risk with DeVito um, and get more knowledge on him um, in his offense under his leadership than Tyrod in, in the slim to marginal difference that he can actually win some of these games. Yeah, I mean, and I agree with you on that point. Like, I think that Tyrod probably gives the Giants the better chance of winning football games, but I'd rather see them develop Tommy DeVito, see how many games Tommy DeVito can win and how well he can perform. But I do just wonder how the Giants feel about it, you know, how this coaching staff feels, because this coaching staff, not that they make promises to players, but, you know, they say that they're going to put the best men on the field every single Sunday, the guys who give them the best chance to win. And if they feel like second string quarterback Tyrod Taylor, when he returns from his injury, if that spot is his and he deserves to have that spot, then I get a little bit questionable about the whole kind of situation here. I wonder if the Giants are going to go ahead and put him back in the starting lineup because he does give them the best chance to win football games. And we know that the Giants have made it clear that their objective for the rest of the season is not to prepare for the offseason. It's to take each game by game and win as many of them as they possibly can. So I do wonder if the Giants are going to roll with Tyrod Taylor when he gets back from injury because they think he gives them the best chance of winning. So I, I think that what Tommy DeVito needs to do here, um, and I know a lot of Giants fans don't want to hear this, but there's a really winnable game coming up here against the New England Patriots. And Tommy DeVito is going to have to go out there and play well and win that football game so he can continue as the starter. Let's say Tommy DeVito goes into that game, plays really poorly, turns the ball over, can't push the ball downfield. The Giants don't score points again, and it's against these crappy Patriots. Then they go into their bye week. Tyrod Taylor's activated. There's a good chance that the Tommy DeVito experience is over because of a bad performance against the Patriots, and we do call it a flash in the pan against Washington because that's what always happens against Washington, flashes in the pan. So I think that what the Giants need to see from Tommy DeVito is can you do it again? Is it a one-time experience, or can you keep doing this? And if he does keep doing it, I think he keeps you know, starting football games. And again, a, a lot of Giants fans might not want to hear that because they don't want the team to win this upcoming Sunday. I know a lot of Giants fans do. A lot of other Giants fans are like, no, God, no, don't lose to the Patriots because if you do, the Patriots get Drake May and we don't. I mean, that's a very realistic outcome and scenario to the Giants losing to New England. But for Tommy DeVito and his personal story, his personal career development and success, he needs to beat these freaking Patriots and he's going to go out there, balls to the walls, and he's going to try and be Tommy Guns, Tommy Tutties, whatever you want to call him. He's going to go out there and try and win this game and it's really important for him that he does play well so i think that's going to be a really interesting storyline to follow if he wins that game i think he continues as a starter if he loses that game i don't think it necessarily matters unless he loses ugly and he plays really poorly then i think there's a conversation about who practices better in that bye week and gets more prepared to play in week 14 versus the green bay packers whether it's tyra taylor or tommy devito alex before we wrap kind of what are your thoughts on that you know like tommy devito really is playing for his career right now like each game is super important to him he can't take any of them for granted I, of course the nice win over washington it's a nice moment it's good for him it's a, a memory that he'll never forget but he does need to keep winning games in order to keep stay as the starter in my opinion do you kind of feel the same way or do you feel like the giants are just kind of going to going to kind of go the development route and go ahead with Tommy DeVito as their starter for the rest of the way, whether or not he's playing well, just because they want to see what they have in him. I mean, look, I don't, I don't think that Tommy DeVito is going to play like so badly that we have to remove him from a game. Um, He's not like a Zach Wilson, to be quite honest, but uh, after last week, I think he's earned the right to have a couple of opportunities. I do think that he'll perform relatively well against New England. Um, it might it might not be great, uh, but I think that you know he'll have a couple of moments that are inspiring to say the least. But I'll say this: he has something to lose, right? Tommy DeVito has something to lose, and it's a chance in the NFL. You know what I mean? If he doesn't play well down the stretch here, like his his chance in the NFL may fall by the wayside. Like they the Giants may decide that you know he's not good enough. Um, he had one big performance, that was it, and then you know it's not enough. Um, they've given a lot more opportunities to other players for a lot less. So you know maybe he is warranted to get another chance next year and or in the years following, but. 
Tyrod Taylor, we know what he is. Like, he doesn't really have anything to lose. Like, he knows he's probably gone after this season. Another team that's looking for a good backup will sign him. He's not. They're not going to sign Tyrod Taylor to be the starter. He's past that point in his career. But he could be a competent backup, and he's extremely injury-prone. So, you know, the writing's on the wall for Tyrod. He really doesn't have much to lose. But Danny DeVito has something to lose. Tommy DeVito has something to lose. So I do believe that right now in his best interest is to ball out and to play hard and really just show everything he's got. And, like, I think, you know, his back is against the wall. I think, like, he's a caged animal right now. And, like, you know, they, he's trying to break out. He's trying to showcase what he can do. So I have optimism that we're going to see the best version of Tommy DeVito simply because um, he's got everything to lose. And Tyrod Taylor has really nothing to lose. Yeah, I think that's about right. I mean, listen, we're in agreement on this one. I, I, I think that, you know, whichever way you slice it, we want to see Tommy DeVito keep playing. And I, I hope that he keeps playing well. And, no, I don't hope that the Giants lose games. I, I think, like we discussed yesterday, Alex – they can keep winning, and they could still land the quarterback. Those two things aren't mutually exclusive. Joe Shane has said before, scared money don't make money. If there's a quarterback prospect that he falls in love with, we know that he's been scouting Caleb Williams and Drake May endlessly. If he falls in love with one of these players, I don't I don't discount the idea of him going out there making a blockbuster trade to go ahead and get one of them if the Giants are picking at five and they need to get the two for their quarterback. You know, like I think that's very possible. So I hope that the Giants keep picking up maybe a couple more wins down the stretch here. I, I, don't, I don't think it's super likely. I think that this is still a bad team. I think we're going to see a regression to the mean. Most things do regress to the mean. And now we just have to find out, is the mean for this football team what we saw all season long, or is the mean closer to what it was last season? And so are we going to regress back to that, which is actually progress up to the mean of last year? Or are we going to see them regress back to the 10, two touchdowns, one touchdown, zero touchdown games that we've seen from them all season? That remains to be seen, and that's what we'll figure out over the course of these final weeks of the season. Yeah, the Giants might win some more games, push themselves out of contention for Drake May or Caleb Williams, but then again, you need some of these wins for the locker room to keep people bought into Brian Dable, his coaching staff, everything that he's trying to build here with this culture and with this locker room. So it's a nuanced thing. It's very interesting to see how this folds, unfolds for the Giants um, and for that locker room and all these young players. But again, I'm just really excited, man, to watch Tommy DeVito the rest of the way. Like, we really didn't have much to watch here for the, the rest of this giant season. Like, a couple weeks ago, we were like, oh, my God, how are we going to make it through the rest of the year? Tommy DeVito's at least given us something to watch for, and I think that's exciting. Like, I can appreciate the fact that I'm going into these Sunday, Sunday games, and I'm like, hell, yeah, I get to see – this Italian kid from New Jersey try and go out there and whoop some ass and live out his dream for the New York Giants. Like, this is my story right here, baby. Like, this is what I'm bought in for. I love this. So I'm tuned in. I'm excited for all of the upcoming games that the Giants are playing. So long as Tommy DeVito remains a starter, if we start losing again and he's not the starter, then I'm probably going to get a little bit bored of the season and miserable once again because the Giants keep losing. But Again, I, I'm very excited to see what happens here for the rest of the year with Tommy DeVito. And, of course, we're going to update you on everything surrounding the New York Giants, their season, what they do with Tommy DeVito versus Tyrod Taylor, and what draft quarterbacks they might be looking at right here on Fireside Giants. So make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and comment your thoughts on the topics down below in the comment section. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. And go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. But without further ado, we will catch you on the next one. Have a good one. And... Let's go Giants.